everyone and welcome back. Just gonna read another part of the Nehemiah story, but at this point they've built it to halfway and the enemy is really annoyed. So let's find out what happens. So it's Nehemiah 4 verse 10 to 14 and it says, Then Judah said, The strength of the labourers is failing and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, They will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came that they told us ten times, From whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Wonderful. The reason I read that is partly because we're going through Nehemiah. I'm reading Nehemiah in my own quiet times this week. But because of what we're going through with this lockdown, I've talked to two families today, Kathy and I walked into town, and this would be pretty general across Britain at the moment. One set was grandparents who haven't been able to cuddle their children in a long time, so meeting at a distance. Another conversation we had was with a father who's separated from his uh, wife or his girl, and so not able to see his own children. And so there's a lot of, of uh, circumstances because of this COVID-19 around Britain, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world, where families have had difficulty. And here in this passage, the enemy wants to destroy the rebuilding of the wall. He's attacking the church today, we know that. But one of his attacks is on the family. And so for some of you who are sharing with us today, this may have been an amazingly difficult time for you, particularly if you've been separated from your loved ones. If you're grandparents, not being able to see your grandchildren is heartbreaking. If you're a parent, not being able to meet up with your family, even down to the level of brothers and sisters and people who've not been able to meet up with each other. If you're living on your own and you've been isolated, not being able to be with your mother or with your children, that's difficult. And so today, what I want us to do is we'll take communion together. This is a family time, really. And God talks about putting the lonely in families. A family is very important to God. And here Nehemiah said, listen guys, we've built it to half our height, as Jemima said, but we've got to finish this job. We've got to fight for our brothers, our sisters, our children. Fight for our families. And so today, as we pray, I want and break bread together. You may need to pause the video. Go and do that and join with us. But we're going to fight for our families. So Jemima and I are going to share together as we break bread. Join with us. Oh yes, we're going to read the bit. Sorry, Jim, I was just joking. <laughs> read the passage. I think we're in, in Luke today. It's Luke 22, verse 14 to 20. And it says, When the hour had come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Wonderful words there. Covenant. The promise is more than a promise. It's a, it's a something that's shed with blood. So we're going to take the bread today, Jemima, myself, with you, and remember that Jesus died for us. Let's eat together. The scripture that Jemima read said that after supper he took the cup, the cup of the new covenant. And as we take this, we remember that Jesus died for us to forgive us of our sins, but also to, to look after us, to care for us, to bless us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And particularly today, we're including our families in this. God loves our families. He loves your parents. He loves your brothers, your sisters, your children, and your grandchildren. So let's join together as a family and let's thank Jesus for what he accomplished for us on the cross. Let's drink together.
Let's pray. I want to pray for you again today. Father, I pray for everybody who's watching us today around the world and here in, in the United Kingdom. And Father, I pray especially for our families. I pray for those who are watching who are in families. And I pray for those who haven't seen their family for a long time particularly those who are grandparents today who are just longing to, to hug and to cuddle with their grandchildren. Lord, give them strength, would you, and bless them. For those who are parents who've not been able to see their children, or children not been able to see their parents, or siblings, brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray for families today. I thank you that you love families. I thank you, Lord, that you chose Abraham and Sarah, and you gave them Isaac, and they, they created this family. I thank you, Lord, for the families we read about in Scripture. You love families. And so today, Lord, I plead your blood over each one of our families together. And as we just lift them to you, we lift our loved ones into your presence and pray that you will bless them today. Wherever they are, whatever country, city, part of the world that they're in, would you let your blessing rest on us and on each member of our family today in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, the Lord bless you today. This is Saturday here that we're celebrating with you together. And it's wonderful to be able to come into your home. Then tomorrow is Sunday. And it's always a special day. You'll be all over the place. We will be digitally. Those of you in America who are meeting back in your churches again, God bless you. We're not envious in any way, but we pray that you'll enjoy that. For those of us here in the UK and in Europe, we're, we're still meeting digitally. And so we'll be going round us here in North Allerton. We're having a wonderful time because the New Life Ghana, we're actually joining up with some folk in Ghana tomorrow here in North Allerton. But we'll be going round different churches tomorrow and it'll be wonderful to celebrate together. Then tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, that's 2 o'clock in Texas and different times in different parts of the world. I think all our digital problems are over. We'll find out tomorrow. But I've had the Sky Engineer tell me everything is okay, so we'll see. <laughs> so we'll be live tomorrow at 8 o'clock here in the UK when we'll be bringing our prayer request to the Lord and celebrating the Lord's Supper together, building up our strength in the Lord. So God bless you today. Have a great weekend and we'll see you tomorrow.